It's estimated that 20 to 40% of our yield is lost each year due to pest pathogens and weeds. Today, we're gonna talk about protecting that seed right from the get-go and helping us chase down the next bushel. Today, we're talking seed treatment. Oh, come on, Clint, let's go. <laughs> This growing season, join me as I meet and talk with expert growers, agronomists, researchers, and breeders looking for ways to get more performance from each and every soybean to help you chase down the next bushel. Hey, you Mike? Yes, sir. Well, I must be in the right spot then. So I'm Clint Chaffer with Asgrow. Oh, good to meet you. I was told that I could stop and have a conversation with you about uh, seed treatment and just some of your management practices on your farm. You sure can. We're getting ready to go down the road and check a cover crop out that I got planted in this field. You want to just hop in and go with me? Well, that sounds great. Can I just leave this parked here? Sure. Perfect. Yeah. How'd you all get started here in Ohio? Well, we, we moved here in 2012 and we lived down south. As, uh, my wife's family, we moved there and farmed down south for uh, about 15 years. And we moved back in 2012 and bought this farm and been here ever since. Oh, nice. Man, you got a, a little experience farming in uh, multiple locations then. Yes, sir. What have you seen change over the time that you've been farming up here? Just data today is big and it's a key part of what we're doing. To be able to see your yield maps and everything you're doing on the farm at an instant to help you make better uh, decisions has is, is been the biggest thing, I think. So, you also you know, mentioned uh, going and checking on a, a field with cover crops here. Uh, is that something that you've always been doing on your operation or is that fairly new? We started experimenting with it, and every year we've just added more and more and more, and we have found that our yields uh, behind a cereal rye cover crop in soybeans is, uh, is steadily increasing. Oh, nice. One of the decisions I was wanting to talk about was really around uh, you know, seed treatments and, and really how, how has your operation started migrating towards seed treatments on, uh, on your soybeans? I think it allows us to plant earlier. It yep. protects the seed in a cool and uh, wetter conditions and more moisture. And, uh, you know, we, we just, our experience with it has been really good to get a good stand. Do you think that it's become more important too as we've maybe migrated away from, you know, 220,000 plants per acre coming out of a drill to, you know, let's say 140 coming out of a planter? Yes, it has allowed us to, um, drop our population and save seed costs for sure yeah. to get good stands. You know, used to we would, you know, plant 180 or 200,000 and try to outplant the diseases <laughs> versus uh, treating them and knowing that we have that protection up front. You got a heck of a good stand out there, that's for yes. sure. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. I mean, you talked about, uh, you know, just some of the, the seed treatments and some of those decisions, Mike. Is this the time of year that you start making those, like, those kinds of decisions for, for let's say, 22? Yes. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll sit down, like, with my agronomist and, and the guys at the uh, plant where we buy our seed stuff yep. and discuss our options and see if there's anything we want to tweak or anything we saw off a yield map. You know, you talked about, you know, you, you've always done the, the fungicide and insecticide and then you started adding in the nematicide. What was the reasoning behind that? Well, we, we were seeing a little bit of a yield bump, you know, with uh, the nematicide. So we uh, we felt like it, uh, we were getting a return on our investment for it. So yeah. that's, that's why we made the decision to go 100% on all soybean seed this year with that also. How did you first start putting nematicide on? Like, why? What was the kind of the reasoning behind that? Well, we just we just were concerned about uh, sudden death and things like that. But oh. you know, we we're just just trying to have a peace of mind, have that protection of having a Cadillac system on our seed versus a, a Pinto. Yeah, hey. <laughs> I like that analogy right there. So, 
Now, you talked about going early, you talked about getting good stands because of that seed treatment. What was uh, the, the final result? Happy with the results coming out of 21? Yes, yes, it's by far our best yield we've ever had on our farm oh. uh, with soybeans. That is that is always uh, always a good feeling yeah. coming out of harvesting very, like that. Very much. Well, well, that sounds great. Well, I tell you what, Mike, I appreciate, uh, you know, just taking the time and uh, having this conversation. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Bowers, I think, is yep. back up at your place. Yeah, Bill's up there waiting on you. He has something to show you. All right. Well, I can't wait. So let's go take a look. All right, let's do it. The one, the only, Bushel Billy. And uh, good morning, Clint. How you be? Been well, been well. Good to finally see you, man. Absolutely. Welcome to Ohio. Nice, wonderful sunny day. Starting to feel a little warmth on our shoulders. Yeah, it's, it's a little, a little brisk, but uh, not too bad. So, oh, Mike and I just came back from the field. He was showing me, uh, showing me the the cover crop out there, and we we're uh, talking a little, a little seed treatment there. So. Excellent. Must have gave you plenty to think about for next season. And I'm going to go make some of those decisions we talked about. All right. Well, hey, we'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you later. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. So, Bill, you are known as, as Bushel Billy in the yes, Instagram sir. world yes, sir. here. So uh, how, how did you get that name? Five years ago, we were being encouraged to tell the story of agriculture on social media. Yep. And I was just looking for a moniker. My wife and I quite literally sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee, kicking around names on a sketch pad and we landed on Bushel Billy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's been a great experience. You also work for Bayer Crop Science. Yes, sir. I mean, what, uh, what, what do you do for them? I've been with the company for, for 10 years now and currently serving as a customer business advisor, which doesn't mean anything to anybody. So I like to refer to myself as, as a grower resource. Okay. So as a CBA, my job is to make sure the farmers are being successful with Bayer products, whether it's our seed, our chemistry, our technology products, it's my job to make sure it's on your farm, you're having success with it, and it's helping move your farm forward in the right direction. So as you're working with farmers, would you help them navigate, you know, what is the right seed treatment for the right situation or right field? We start with the seed treatment, uh, largely fungicide and insecticide. So by wrapping the treatments around that seed and creating a zone in the furrow with it, then it offers a, several layers of protection against those fungal pathogens, against insect feeding, and protecting the germs so that plant has plenty to feed on, plenty of energy to draw, to sprout, to grow, and get a great start in the season. Last episode, we went through all the genetic aspects. Is that what we're trying to protect? We're trying to protect just the integrity of that seed to make sure that we can maximize the yield then? So the whole concept behind seed treatment is to get every plant out of the ground, to get the stand established, and get the table set for a fantastic season and fantastic yield results in the fall. So we talked about, you said fungicide and insecticide. Mm -hmm. Now there's another one with nematicides then as well, right? Yes. So what, what, what am I trying to do with that, that treatment? Well, the reason we call it seed applied solutions and not just seed treatment is we got a whole basket of options here, right? <laughs> yep. And like I said, part of what we do as a trusted advisor on the farm is to make sure we pick the right ingredients out of this basket that address your problems and concerns on the farm to set you up for success. Right now, I'm working with about 30,000 units of corn and 80,000 units of beans. And most of the conversations, so many of them, is what field did this go again? Yeah. I mean, we, we've gone as far as taking the FSA mats and we put them on the box. <laughs> it goes in this field, just a picture right there. That There's way, the field boundary It's that this. important to guys to get the right product in the right place that, that it's a, we put a tremendous amount of effort and conversation around setting it up for success by putting it in the right field to begin with, with the appropriate treatments, the appropriate management because at the end of the day, we get paid by the bushel, right? Yeah. We got, it's all about the bushels and we got to deliver at the end of the year. It seems like everybody I've talked to continues to plant early and earlier, right? Yes. Uh, and in my mind, that's probably putting seeds into more cool, wet soil and things of that nature. Oh, yeah. I mean, does 
seed treatment has to come into play there, right? We spoke earlier how we've seen step changes in the management of soybeans, and the earlier planting date is probably one of the most important step changes we've seen. Yep. At the research farm, the last four years, we've planted a pass of soybeans every week from the last week of March to the first week of June. And the answer always is, the earlier you can get a stand established, the better the yield is going to be. Yep. So if we think about those early planting dates where it's cool and wet, as you mentioned, the pathogen load, the fungal load in the soil is just so much higher. And that environment is just so much more hostile to the seedling. Yeah. You gotta have the seed treatment around it in order to get it established and get it going. If we can get that stand established early, what we've seen, the difference between an April 10th planting versus a May 10th planting is 13 nodes per plant. Oh, wow. Clint, that is 13 sites to flower and set pods and produce bushels, man. And you just can't Ooh. replace that. Yeah. So as, as we're working with our crop rotations, we're working with our labor management, those soybeans are getting pushed up on the calendar more and more, and for good reason, is because it pays off. But we can't do it without the seed treatment protecting and getting that plant off to a good start. Do you have any good way to, to maybe illustrate this to folks on how you know seed treatment does work? I mean, it's under the ground, so we can't see it. So is there any good illustrations? That makes it real tough, you know, because seeing is believing, right? So I think we found a fantastic way to illustrate this. You're a willing participant, so. I might be, might ask the wrong <laughs> question here. All right, Bill, uh, I guess uh, I'm going to guess that. Go suit uh, up. Yeah, this is going to be And fun. don't mind these. I'll just be <laughs> right behind you. <laughs> Clint, our job is so weird. I think we're, I think we're set, aren't we? Mike, you're just in time, buddy. What are we doing? That's a good question. That's a good <laughs> question. Clint had requested a visual representation of how seed treatment protects the seed germ underground. So this here is our zone of protection. We got imidacloprid, we got uh, fluconazole, metalaxyl, all the wonderful stuff in here that is going to protect you from pathogens and insect pressure. And, and exactly what are the pathogens and insect pressure that it's protecting me from? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike, do you, uh, you want to be insect pressure or pathogens? Insect. Okay. <laughs> huh. Now the only thing left is the seed. Guess who gets to be the seed? No. That's just me, right? It's you. Son of a gun. <laughs> All right, well, here we go. I think I need a little, you got a little talc? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is that. I think we'll step out in this little pasture here, but first, ah. safety first. Let's, safety let's first. get you masked up. All right. This is another layer of seed treatment, right? That's right. There we go. Against SDS, <laughs> sudden death. <laughs> That's a nematicide right there. There we go. Well, Bill, so, I think... Uh, how well did it do, Clint? I, I I don't think anything got through to me. Look at that. We stopped it all. Yeah. I we got see a nice, healthy works. little seed germ inside, don't we? <laughs> that, that, was a little, that, that was exciting. Do you understand better how seed treatment works now? I do. I think I understand <laughs> it. Well, thank you for the demonstration. Uh-huh. Well, as 2021 comes to an end, so does this season. But hey, what not a better way to start 22 than on the right foot and talking about seed treatments. Also, I'd just like to say, thanks for following along this season. It's been absolutely awesome. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. I think the seed treatment worked. <laughs> I got a hole in it. <laughs> I lost uh -oh. my hair. <laughs>